Now, did you know that 57% of employees cite poor relationships with their bosses as a major source of anxiety and frustration? But not you, not after today, because I'm gonna share four game-changing strategies that'll have your boss trusting your account management skills faster than you can say client retention. So let's dive in. Let's begin at the very beginning and talk about why your relationship with your boss is crucial for your career. Your boss isn't just another person you report to. They are the, the key to your success as an account manager. And here's why. First, your boss can remove obstacles that slow you down. They can get you the resources that you need to serve your clients better. And importantly, they can support your career growth, pushing you for promotions and pay raises. Even if you're not aiming for a higher position, a good relationship with your boss improves your job satisfaction. It gives you more freedom to manage your accounts your way and to try new strategies with clients. You wanna know the secret? Treat your boss like your number one client. Give them the same care and proactive communication you give to your top accounts. Earn their trust and confidence and you'll be unstoppable. So now let's address the elephant in the room, micromanagement. Now, if you have ever felt your boss hovering over your every move, you're not alone. But here's the twist. It's not often about you. In fact, rarely about you. There are four main reasons that bosses micromanage and understanding them can help you improve your relationship. So there is lack of trust. Maybe you're new or you haven't proven yourself yet. There's unclear progress. So maybe they just don't know what you're doing or don't have visibility on what you're doing day to day. There's pressure from above. You know, they're anxious about hitting targets and the senior leaders are putting the squeeze on. And control issues. Maybe they just you know, struggle to delegate. Remember when your boss is breathing down your neck, it's often about their insecurities and not your abilities. Mm -hmm. Understanding this is the first step to building a better relationship. And trust me, the strategies I'm about to share will help you turn that micromanager into your biggest supporter. Let's take a deep dive into the manager archetypes. There's five of them that I've come across in my career, so I'm gonna break it down for you. There's the busy bee. Now this boss is a whirlwind of activity. They're sending emails at 6 a.m., they're scheduling back-to-back -back meetings, and they're expecting you to keep up. Now to thrive, you have gotta match their pace, provide frequent, concise, updates on key accounts. Be responsive and show you're just as dedicated as they are. I'm not saying send emails at 6 a.m., but you can find a way to you know, match that energy. The hermit crab. Now this is the manager that is all work and no play. They avoid office socials, they keep their door closed and they're strictly professional. So respect their boundaries. Keep interactions focused on work. Use email for non-urgent matters and don't take it personally when they decline team lunches. It's just the way they are. Now there's the shark. This kind of manager is ambitious. They're self-focused and this kind of boss is always looking for their next career move. Now they might take credit for your work or you know, conveniently forget to mention your contributions. So to navigate these waters, document your achievements and find ways to showcase them yourself. Keep the shark informed of wins, of course, but be strategic about how you share information. And then there's the door, you know, well-meaning but scattered. You know, this boss forgets important details and deadlines they might ask you the same question multiple times or miss crucial meetings. Be patient, be proactive, send gentle reminders and follow up in writing. Always have a plan B for important client matters just in case. Finally, there's the goat. They're perpetually anxious. They're always on the edge about targets and deadlines. They might micromanage out of fear that things won't get done. So you can ease their stress by providing unprompted detailed updates on your accounts. You can offer solutions, not just problems, and position yourself as a reliable support system. Recognizing your boss type is step one. The real challenge though, is adapting your approach to work effectively with them. Which type do you have and how can you apply these insights to improving your working relationship starting today. Let's talk about it. Number one, get to know your boss. And I'm not talking about their favorite sports team or vacation spots. I'm talking about understanding what makes them tick professionally. Start by asking about their background and experience. What led them to this role? What are their biggest challenges and priorities? For example, you might discover your boss worked their way up from an entry-level position. Well, this is a great insight and could explain why they value hard work so much. But don't stop there. Have regular conversations about how you can support each other. Ask what you can do to make their job easier and be proactive in offering your help and expertise. And now I know what some of you are thinking, like my boss is in possible. I get it. Not every boss is a joy to work with. I've been there. I've done that. And I bought the t-shirt. So here's the thing. You don't have to like your boss, but you still have to find a way to work together. Respect their journey and their title, even if you question their style. Be professional, even when frustrated. If they micromanage, try to see it as their way of staying involved, not distrusting you. Remember my mantra, treat your boss like your number one client, because in your career, that's exactly what they are. So let me ask you, how well do you really know your boss? And what's one thing you could do today to understand them better? So picture this, it's Friday afternoon, you're about to start your weekend, and when suddenly your boss calls you in fuming about an account issue you knew about days ago but didn't mention. <sighs> Ouch. This is exactly what we want to avoid, right? 
The solution, proactive communication. Now don't worry, I'm not talking about writing a daily novel to your boss. Keep it concise and impactful. Here are two key tactics, regular check-ins, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever makes sense. Use these to update on key accounts, share important metrics and discuss priorities. And sending a brief weekly email report. You can include a high level summary of your activities, major wins, challenges and upcoming goals. For example, you might say, this week I renewed client X, I resolved issue with client Y and next week focusing on upselling client Z. But remember, Proactive communication isn't just about updates. It's also about setting clear expectations and avoiding surprises. You wanna make sure that you clarify deliverables and timelines up front. And if you hit a roadblock, speak up immediately. You don't wanna wait until it kind of dissolves into a crisis. Your boss is juggling multiple priorities just like you. So by keeping them informed, you're making their job easier and showcasing your value. So let me put this challenge to you. How can you step up your communication game this week? What's one proactive update you can give your boss today. Okay, strategy number three is to demonstrate ownership. This is your ticket to building trust and credibility with your boss. Ownership means taking responsibility for your success, for your failures, and everything in between. So let's break it down into four key actions. First, take initiative and solve problems on your own. Don't run to your boss with every little issue. You know, if a, if a client's unhappy, brainstorm solutions before approaching your boss. And when you do need to involve your boss, come prepared. Bring data, insights, action plans, show that you've thought it through. Next, do what you say you'll do and do it well. Don't ever promise. Consistent delivery is what builds trust and shows you can handle the tough challenges. Own your mistakes. We all mess up, your boss included, but great key account managers acknowledge errors, they learn from them and they prevent future ones. Remember, demonstrating ownership is about taking control of your work and your career. Be proactive, solution oriented and accountable. Now, when you do this consistently, your boss will see you as a true leader and an invaluable team member. So is there a problem you've been thinking about going to your boss to that you could probably solve yourself? If there is, go ahead and do it. Build your influencing skills. This is your secret weapon for swaying your boss. The first rule of influence, speak your boss's language. If they're a big picture thinker, then focus on high level strategy and results. If they love the details, Bring specific examples, timelines, reports, metrics. Next up, align your ideas with your boss's goals. If you're pitching a new project, highlight how it drives revenue, improves customer satisfaction, or boosts efficiency. Show them that you understand what matters to them. Influence isn't just about getting what you want. It's not a one-way street. It's about making sure that you are a valuable partner. So regularly ask for your boss's input and advice. Show them that you value their perspective. This is gonna strengthen your relationship and it helps you grow as well. And finally, don't underestimate the power of gratitude. When your boss supports you or your team, let them know you appreciate it. I have been a manager for many, many years of key account management teams and quite often it's a thankless job. And honestly, that little acknowledgement once in a while from the team that they see what I'm doing, and that it's helped them, I can dine out on that on those fumes for months and months. So give credit where it's due. A little recognition certainly goes a long way in building a positive relationship. So over to you. What is one way that you can better align with your boss's priorities this week? How can you show appreciation for their support? Give us some thought. All right, heroes, we have covered a lot of ground today, so let's wrap it up. Remember, managing your relationship with your boss is just as crucial as managing your key accounts. It's about creating a partnership that drives success for both of you. So over to you, what's your next move? Drop a comment, let me know what it is. Maybe it's to schedule that one-to-one -one with your boss to better understand their priorities. Maybe it's sending that proactive update email you've been putting off. Whatever it is, take action today, start small, be consistent, and watch how your relationship with your boss transforms.